I'm so icy, I'm so icy, I'm so icy, I'm so icy. Look at this ice, look at this ice, look at this ice, look at this ice. I'm so icy. Happy New Year's. I have the beautiful Nadia Monique in the studio. This is rare. This was hard to get you here. You're busy. It's the new year. We're four days in. Um, how was your New Year's? It was good. I mean, obviously, with the circumstances of COVID, you know, we had to stay home, but it was we made the most out of it. Did you just have family, friends? Yeah, it was just family, fireworks in the back, you know, the whole, okay, the whole thing. <laughs> COVID has been a nightmare. I actually had it like a month ago. Um, I had to quarantine. This is my first interview back since COVID. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, the first couple of days I was I was out. Have you have you caught it yet or no? Hopefully I not. I think so. Just because I I got really really sick in the beginning of like last year, and that was like before COVID was even a thing. Like they had a name for it, and I got really really sick, and I thought maybe, and then that's when like COVID, like the name started coming about, and I was like, shit, did I have it? Like coronavirus, COVID, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. It's definitely serious. Um, I'm happy the vaccine's kind of circulating now, and hopefully we can get back to like you know real life concerts. And I'm sure for you, you can start traveling a lot and doing yeah. all your stuff. I'm excited. I'm done with COVID, so I'm ready for it to be over. What do you think it, the biggest challenges COVID has affected you in your career? I would say definitely like the events. Networking is like such a huge thing, like in the industry. You know, if you're wanting to grow with anything, and I think the events and different like parties and stuff, you meet a lot of well-known people, good people too, like good connections. And I think that's what really like held back a lot of people from growing this year was everything's done on social media now, everything's done on your phone at home. So it's like, you have to kind of be creative on your own if you wanted to grow in like 2020, you know? Have you had some opportunities that you just lost because of COVID or that you just decided you didn't want to do? Uh, Both, yeah, I would say definitely within music videos it's a requirement to do a COVID test within the whole cast just because we need you know like that type of secureness for everyone to be on like the scene at the same time close you know what I mean body movements everything is so it definitely was a setback for a lot of opportunities for me as well I want to let everybody know like really you're you're an entertainment show host you're a fashion model I mean a lot goes into all that waking up every day as far as just getting into the modeling side of it all how serious do you take that? Because I know like the gym, diet, and just planning out your outfits for the day and doing your shoots. What goes into all that? Because it's not easy. It is not. But honestly, I tell this to everyone, I'm the laziest, busiest person you will ever meet. Okay, so like okay. I will sleep up until the last minute and then like I'll start getting ready. And it's a like you said, it's a process. Like it definitely is. I would say more so people don't ever see what's behind the picture. You know what I mean? They just see the outcome. They don't see like the process of what's going into it. There's times where... You know, I'm running late because I need to get gas or like, you know, like just little things like that. Like people don't take that in consideration when you're doing like social media. It's important, you know. Yeah. Do you have a manager right now or no? I don't. Do you need one maybe? I mean, if anyone's watching, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure people would manage you for sure. Yeah. We'll get to that point. Let's get into the music video that you did in 2020. It's, I'm a huge weekend fan. Uh, Maluma, I'm I'm saying it wrong. I keep saying it wrong. No, you did good. That was good. That was good. Maluma, Mm -hmm. beautiful. How did that video come about? Because I'm um, like I said, The Weeknd's one of my favorite artists. I have the XO tattooed on me, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I bring it up all the time. And I have to bring it up this podcast. But um, how did that come about with with The Weeknd? So actually, I'm in like this modeling group chat and they sent out a casting. So the whole thing came about, which was crazy, was the about two weeks before that, I was casting for like a Chris Brown music video. And it came out to be um, like fake. Like it was like a setup or a something. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. So when I got this email and like this casting, I was like, there's no way. Like, there's no way I'm going to be with The Weeknd and Maluma. So obviously, like I said, yeah, but I had to cancel a lot of other things because I was already scheduled for another music video that day. And how long ago was this? Maybe like six months? It was November. So about two months ago, a month oh, ago. This recent? Yeah, it was very Holy recent. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. So I had to cancel. Like, I'm, it's that's the thing too. Like, you have to make sacrifices within you know, what you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, what would you choose? And that's like the hardest thing. Like, you're going to have to make people mad to grow. For you sure, know? yeah. So I ended up taking it. And of course, like I said, everyone in the cast had to have a COVID test. And again, even when I was on set, like there, ready, dressed up, I was like, he's not in the other room. Like you guys, like, I don't know why you guys are like, he's not, they're not here, you know? And that's just my mindset because with the industry, there's so many fraud, like there's so many like 
false things false advertisements so it's like i n will never let myself get my hopes up for sure for like videos and stuff like that because you never know the outcome you know for sure and i actually worked with the weekend first before maluma and so you got to meet abel yeah okay, that's yeah awesome. and he was like when I first walked in, he did a double take when I walked in. So then that was like, Damn, got my nerves okay. going. And I was like, stop. <laughs> and the thing is, too, is I'm not a big Weekend fan. Like, I'm really not. Like, really? And, but for some reason, when I met him in we person. We won't post that. We won't post that. <laughs> okay, yeah, we cut that out. We're good. But no, like, honestly, like, that's truthful. Like, I wasn't a Weekend fan. But when I met him, I'm telling you, his, like, vibe. Demeanor. Let's get into that. Yeah. What's he like? Oh, my Because I, I want to know as a I fan. I'm a diehard fan. It made me a fan. Okay. I'll tell you that. Like he Why? is just so humble. Okay. Um, and I like that the scene that we were doing was we were all dancing around him and like he was singing to all of us and it felt like a good time and like genuinely, like genuinely, like without all the cameras there, I felt like I would have had a good time with no cameras there. You know what I mean? Like he just had that vibe, like he was just so humble. He was talking to all of us like we weren't just extras, you know what I mean? And I like that from artists who aren't cocky, you know, who can make jokes with other people, can have a good time, you know, not knowing that this is actually work, you know? I loved him. I loved him. <laughs> That's so dope. Yeah. And I'm sure you've listened to a lot of his music since. I, I'm i trying to get there, yeah. You catch up. <laughs> yeah. He has a lot. Yeah, no, he's amazing. Like, after meeting him, I understood a lot of his songs. I understood a lot of his words and, like, the way he portrays himself. I get it now, so. Yeah, he's a full artist all the way around from yeah. his music videos to his music to how he puts out his stuff. He's just, he's top of the notch. What did you pick up from, you've been in other music videos too. Yeah. So what did you pick up from, I mean, you really can't be in a bigger music video than with The Weeknd. So hopefully you can top it off one day. But what did you pick up from working with The Weeknd compared to other artists maybe, and not knocking other artists, but just how he does his videos and how he goes about, you know, his day-to-day -day actions compared to other people? That's really hard because I didn't see him a lot. Mm -hmm. I only saw him for our scenes. So I don't know how he does like his business outside of it. For but sure. with like smaller local artists, you'll see like how they run things and how they do things themselves. But I would say definitely like the professionalism because from different artists, I've seen them, you know, kind of like wild out on set, like because it's their own set, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he took it very like serious and you can tell like he was there to work. And I think like there's a time and place to be have fun and like joke around with him. And that was when the cameras were off. But I like that, like he really brought it like back to, you know, professionalism and back to serious when the cameras turned back on when it was time to to work. All right. And I'm sorry, I'm like drilling you on this, but like, I really want to know. So when the cameras are off, I know you said he's super sweet and gen is this, is this a genuine regular dude? Yeah. Like it didn't even feel like it was the weekend, but like you just knew, you know what I mean? Like you knew who it was. And I, I think that he was asking us like for like criticism or like how he was doing, you know what Man, I mean? He was asking awesome. all of us, like, how am I doing? Like, is my Spanish good? Like... He was like, is it hot in here or is it just me? And we're like, yeah. Like, you know, he was just regular, like, talking. And I, that's what I liked about him was it wasn't, like, he's not a showy off type of celebrity. He's not like, oh, look at me, look at me, like, all this. Like, he literally was wearing just, like, regular clothes. Like, he looked super cool. Like, and that's what I liked about him the most because I didn't really get that same reaction from Maluma. So, like, when I got it from Malu or The weekend, it was, like, a different experience, you know? For sure. I mean, he's, like I said, he's incredible. Yeah, he really is. And I'm hoping <laughs> he puts out a new project soon. His last project, I think, was when I went to Coachella, like, two years ago, three years ago, he mm -hmm. performed. And it was awesome. It was, like, my favorite performance ever. I don't know if you were there or not, but no. it was Eminem, <laughs> Beyonce. He was headlining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an unbelievable performance. But And I was going to go this year to Coachella, but obviously it's canceled. So yeah. I'm, I'm hearing it's going to be in October again, though, but we'll see. How did you get into modeling? I started when I was about 15 years old. Um, I actually went to, like, this meetup. It was, like, a photography meetup. And since that was my first ever experience in the modeling industry, it helped me out a lot because like meetups aren't just one photographer, one model. It's like a bunch of local photographers, a bunch of local models. So I got to meet basically a lot of people my first time. Okay. So that's what helped me a lot grow because like I was very new, fresh, and I got to meet everyone. And like, you know, we're all talking about working together. So it's like, we're all starting to like collab. And that's what helped me honestly a lot like grow from the beginning was because of like meetups rather than just like photography shoots with just one photographer because you're meeting more different, you know, people in one area. You know, and you didn't have it really easy like in high school. I know one thing for you is you, you had to deal with bullying and mm -hmm. you, were, you were bullied a lot in high school and stuff like that. I don't know how, but. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of experiences did you deal with with bullies or, you know, being bullied in high school and stuff like that and why? 
Um, just jealousy probably from other girls or? It was, yeah, honestly, it was really, really hard because I felt like nobody else was doing the things that I was doing at that extent, at that age. So it was more so just, I was new, you know, I was fresh, like trying to start something with myself and like people were having like a hard time with me, like modeling or like things like that. Like they had like fashion shows in my school and they would never like pick me. They would never put me in. So I would like go out outside of school and do my own thing, like do different shows. And like my biggest thing is since I was a younger, like since I was younger, like I didn't have a dad. Okay. So I've already, since I was younger, had that mentality set in me to like prove people wrong for sure so like all through high school like everything i always use other people's words to prove me like to prove them wrong you know like even when it's so weird i don't know why i don't know why my mindset's like this but like i like to know that people don't like something because i will never stop doing that does that make sense like savage i like i like to know (laughs) that like people don't want they don't like me doing this because i'm gonna do it more in your face like yo i got this what it's what it is yeah so like it's so weird. I don't know why, but like when I'm hurt, when I'm, you know, in a really dark place, that's when I perform my best. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. Like that's when I like go harder. That's when I don't care. And like, that's the thing with um the weekend and Maluma, like I'm going to go back to that just because. And I want to go back to that too, because I want to ask you something about that. Yeah. So in the scene, um, it's me and Maluma, like, and we just weren't working out. Like the scene was supposed to be us together and mm-hmm. it just wasn't like, for some reason we weren't like our connection wasn't clicking together. For sure. So That's I was, important. and I was getting frustrated just because I wanted to do really good in this. Like the producers were saying, like, it wasn't like that good, like our scene. And I really, I was going through a lot, like in that video before that. So like, I was just frustrated because I wanted this so bad. You know what I mean? And so finally they took him out and they're like, okay, then just you do it. And like, that's what made me, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it my way. And, and so that's the part that made the video was when I did it my own way. I know during the video, during that time, you were going through, you know, some hard stuff in your life personally. What, yeah. what was going on, if you don't let me ask, and, and only share what you really want to, but I, yeah. know, I know it was kind of a difficult time for you. Yeah, it was. At um, one of the biggest times in your career. Exactly. Yeah, I was going through a breakup. I know it sounds so like stupid. Um, I was going through a breakup and it was just hard because I wasn't understanding, you know, why things were like starting to fail in my relationship with mm-hmm. someone. And it was taking a toll on me because like when I got that news, like I only want to share it with that person. You know what I mean? And since that person wasn't there, it was really hard for me to like be excited because like I just wanted that person to be there and like celebrate it with me. So it was like difficult for me to just kind of like accept and celebrate my wins in private when like I wanted to be celebrated with those that I love, you know? So, um, and also like just the same thing with like bullies. Like I was getting a lot of hate comments at the time too because of me traveling, I was actually out there for another video and then it did really good. But again, like, you know how social COVID media is. Yeah, so I was just getting like a bunch of like negativity and like put into my life and then like such a beautiful thing came out from that. So, I mean, I'm very thankful for the hardships that happened because obviously like it would have never let me get to that point, like in the video. And like, like I said, that's when I work my hardest. So that's why like, after they picked me for like that solo part, I was like, it's going to make it in. Like I kept telling myself, I kept talking to God. I was like, it's going to make it in and it's going to change a lot of things for me. So let me ask you this. Since you were in the video, how has that changed your career right now? It changed everything. (laughs) It's so crazy. I just was, I don't know if you, do you have me on Snapchat? I don't have you on Snapchat. Oh, because I was like, I literally just posted that today. And it was like, it's crazy how a video has changed so much for me. For sure. Um, so that video, the day that it dropped, I was at like 9,000 followers. Okay. And the day that it dropped, that's when I got 10K. And and now I'm not just talking crap, but like just from being an extra in a video that people saw. Yeah, no, but I'm not even at 10K. I'm at 14.1K now. Now? Now. So you gained about 5,000 in a month. Two months, yeah, two months. That's the power of social media. Yep. And it's crazy because I was in there for less than a second. <laughs> That's crazy. I was in there for less than a so second. So how do you think they found you just from like the, how do you think they found you? Well, I was playing in Times Square. Okay. And I remember I was getting a bunch of videos um, from random people that just had me on Snapchat. Like I don't have them added, like they just have me. And I was just getting like pictures and videos of me in New York, like on Times Square. And I was like, that's just. Because the video really showed your face. Like it was yeah. like. It was and it was like a solo straight shot. shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think like. More so everyone was just like, you know, who's that? Because I, so I went with, like I said, a bunch of models, like extras. 
and the two main models i think it was ivanka i think that's her name it was it was just like two other main models obviously like they got the solo part because they're they're that's what they're meant to be who, who was in it right in the beginning she, she's barely really famous on Instagram. E- i think it's ivanka i think that's i think that's her name Yovang. dark hair yeah yeah i, I know she is name. yeah yeah she's dark hair thin really pretty yeah so obviously her and then the two other ones with the blonde are the pink wigs like mm-hmm. they were supposed to be like the main shot but i was the only model that had like that solo shot you got that more wasn't of a, shot than a part her, of than her yeah, yeah that wasn't even a part of like the main cast like i was the only one so i think that's what like helped me a little bit was just that less than a second shot of me it definitely helped you because it was like in the first minute of the music video too. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, it was, it was like, crazy. Boom. Yeah, and I didn't even know like, oh my God, I I was keeping track after like the video had, like we filmed it because I wanted to know when it was going to drop. And I remember I was on Instagram and I kept up with Maluma's page because like, I wanted to see when like the video was going to drop. For sure. And I saw, all I saw was a post and it was like him in the weekend and it said link in bio. Damn. So I was like, you're lying. And I was, it was supposed to come out that weekend, but it came out like a Thursday, I think. So, shit happens, so I man. clicked on the YouTube and I saw like the Hawaii official video and I clicked on it. And like, again, like I'm like the first three seconds or like first couple of seconds. So I wasn't expecting that like to be so soon. And I like, I, <laughs> I literally ripped off my covers. And I like jumped out of bed and I put it on like the, my TV, like the Hell big yeah. screen. And I was like, I need to like make sure I'm not See seeing an HD these. Yeah, like I need like the surround sound. Like I need to have this full moment. <laughs> and the thing is too, is like nobody was home. So it was again, just me you like that moment, celebrating like by me. myself, you know, like just, it was like emotional because like, Hell yeah, that's- I've never like really felt that type of like proudness of myself for you to be in that video is huge we're just gonna say what it is it's fucking huge yeah it's, i mean you're not that wasn't like like i said the weekend's like the biggest artist and even people like yeah like you're saying like yeah it's huge but even people they're like it's only one second like calm down no, it's like fucking i was huge. getting it's... a bunch of hate just for that you know what i mean just because of how happy i was to even make it like that's all like that just proves to you like social media is just so negative with things like this <sighs> and i wish i knew her name but you look at the other girls that were casted for this video and they were like the biggest models in the country even around the world Mm -hmm. so you know you take that and with it and obviously it's huge it's just huge all the way around yeah you're also involved in the glitch boutique what exactly is the glitch boutique because you're the mom of the glitch boutique i am the mom yeah it's me and my best friend jaylene so honestly all it is is I get so many like music video outfits and like different outfits that i'm never gonna wear again so i just feel like bad for them to just be sitting in my closet and I don't want to like just give them away so I started making my own thing because I know a lot of people like a lot of my followers always ask where my clothes are from and so I was like you know what just have it like you can have it you know what I mean and I started just giving my clothes away like to people and then um I just came to a point where I had so many that I was like let me just make a page and then just put everything that I don't want anymore like you know I've only worn once or twice yeah and then even like PR, like I wear it for like the pictures and I get them for the for the brand and then I'm never going to wear it again. So sure. I just started like, you know, giving it to other people. And I obviously cut the price way in half because like it's just it's not about the money. I just need to get rid of them. Definitely, you know? yeah, yeah, definitely. And it made me happy because recently I started doing like little shoots for Glitch and I started getting a lot of girls out of their comfort zones because a lot of the clothes is like plus size too. And this one girl, she told me, she was like, this is the first time I've ever wore like anything like this and like felt comfortable because of you guys. Damn. So then like just hearing things like that, like it just makes me want to get more people involved. And like, that's one of my biggest goals this year is to actually grow that like page more For sure. than what it, it was originally supposed to be because it started to turn into something different. You know what I mean? So everybody has to follow it. Glitch Boutique with two E's, right? Yes. So Glitch Boutique with yes, two E's. Thank you guys. <laughs> For sure. Follow. Um, What brands, because I know Calvin Klein you worked with. What are some of the brands besides Calvin Klein you've worked with in the past? Um, I worked with Fashion Nova, but everyone, I feel like everyone, all yeah. like the social media people work with Fashion At Nova. Recently, they've been like hitting up everybody. Yeah, no, yeah. And a lot of local ones, honestly, like they're not super big, but they mean a lot to me just because of like what they've done for me. Like the, um, the outfit that I wore with the music video, like Maluma and stuff, like they... Um, ever since then like they've been hitting me up trying to do more with me just because of that it was like a big thing for them you know for sure and a lot of the alleys like in LA like um, fashion district okay that's where I pretty much get all my stuff and like ever since then they've been helping me out a lot and I think that's what's more so grateful for me is I like to help smaller um, brands smaller boutiques and stuff like that because they help me out a lot like more than 
the bigger brands, if that makes sense. So if there's brands and boutiques and stores, you know, listening to this, which hopefully they are, you are open to working with them. And- oh, of course. I always, I always accept DMs. I always accept different things for them because I know how hard it is as a business owner. Like I'm trying to be as much as I can for them as well. Like as music videos, um, photo shoots, like I will go above and beyond just to get their work out there. And I think that's why they strike like they start they want to work with you yeah like they want to work with me more is because of that like i don't like just half-ass their their clothes you know what i mean like i give them something that they can give back onto their page their websites videos all that like i'll make sure that they're taken care of and i'm sure they see that in the work that you deliver for other brands and i'm sure people talk to and they and they hear that you know this is what you do and you take Mm -hmm. it really seriously and you'll go you'll go that extra step for them which is huge yeah you were gonna do and i don't know if you did or not but you were gonna do your own fashion show and I read this and it had to do with the foster care system. I thought this was a really cool and neat idea. And instead of playing music in the background, you guys were going to play stories of different, um, just stories of different children that had, I don't know, how can I say this? Um, just different life events that they've had. Yeah. Did that happen? COVID. Okay. It was COVID. Yeah. That's a we... fucking awesome idea. I mean, just to say, cause I was reading it and like to get people's emotions out and mm-hmm. then to kind of show what, what the fashion show, I do, I definitely think that'd be like an emotional moment. It would be a good moment. Yeah, no, we had, um, I think, three kids in foster care that we um, would actually like, they're involved with like modeling as well. And like just hearing, you know, like their struggles, like their hardships and stuff. And then like, um, I'm really, really passionate about like sex trafficking, like just like helping, you know what I mean? So for me, like that was something that was like, like I had to do it. You know what I mean? It was like a feeling that I had, like I wanted to help these people like, and I've gone through my own, you know, like different Mm -hmm things in life so like seeing that i wanted to be a voice for their stories and i didn't want like i wanted to throw an event but i didn't want it to be like that every day like just the same typical events that they always have like i wanted it to be emotional because i feel like these type of people don't ever ever get the spotlight that they deserve for their stories and for what they've been through so i really just i wanted this idea to come to life so bad but i just felt like it wasn't realistic just within the fact that not everyone's going to understand their stories. Not everyone's going to agree with, you know, like the racism part, like that was like a controversial type of um, brand that we wanted to have involved in the fashion show. And I just, I felt like something as that public, I didn't know if other people were going to understand and connect with the the models as well and like their stories. And I didn't want them to feel like on the spotlight and like feel ashamed of like their story, if that makes sense, you know? For sure. Do you think when COVID ends, this is something you might get back into and do? Oh yeah, of course. With your friend, obviously, who's yeah. a designer too. Yeah, of course. And we've we've talked about it before. Um, we actually are working on like a show right now coming up this year. But then again, like it's everything's up in the yeah, air right now. There. Yeah, especially with you because you're also like really hot right now with everybody trying to hit you up. And <laughs> yeah, you, and so. I don't want it to be a half-ass show. So I I will make sure like if it's not going to be what it's supposed to be, we we'll, we will not do it. Let's get back to the sex trafficking thing because I think one of your first modeling gigs, you had to deal with kind of a, a really creepy photographer that wound up getting arrested. Um, I watched your vlog a little bit about it, but I yeah. wanted to hear a little bit more from you on it. I don't even know where to start. Like that's like one of the stories that kind of set me back from a lot of things. Like I took a break, I think um, about six months to a year after that happened to me. And you were 17 at the time. I was 17. Yeah. And basically, I mean, I don't know if, you want to go to too deep into it, but he, Let's hear it. yeah, we just, we were all casted like for this um, photo shoot thing. And we all met at like a hotel, which in my mind, it didn't seem like super out of the ordinary because I've met other designers in a hotel and like, basically they have the lobby rented out for them. So it's not like a apartment room or like a hotel room, if that makes sense. To set it straight, this was the photographer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was a photographer and he was like fifties, 60s and you were creeped out like instantly when you met him yeah just because of um you can just tell other models vibes when they get there and you can tell that they were very like kind of like to themselves in there and right away like he didn't even like let me introduce myself he just gave me that contract like just kind of shoved it in my face like i need you to sign this before we do anything because like i don't want any of like the way i do things around here like to get out which is understandable like I've gotten those contracts before with other people and it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? For sure. It's kind of standard stuff. Right. But just the fact that he was like the way he was going about it was giving me like red flags to like read over it. So I went to the bathroom, read over it. 
I filled out everything that he wanted me to, um, but just the age thing, of course, because I wasn't 18. Like he never, and that's like something too, like as a photographer, you make sure that they're of age before you make them drive out there. You Most know what definitely. I mean? Before you make them like do any anything to get out there to work with you, you know? So I was already out there and I gave him the paper back and I was like, I'm not 18. Like, you know, and like, that's when immediately he like kind of flipped out and was like, like, do your parents know where you are? Like, do you, like, what do you mean? And he should immediately just cut it from right then and there. Exactly. And it that was like another red flag for me. And it, the thing with, for me was I was already out there. Um, I was, I wasn't alone with him. There was a bunch of other people. So Definitely. I felt like safe enough to stay. And again, like it was just the whole night was just really weird just because he was like being like very like inappropriate. You can tell something was up. Yeah. Like just inappropriate comments, like when taking pictures of me. Um, and this was after he knew you were 17 too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's even creepier. Yeah. He was asking me to like do nude shoots and like just super like inappropriate right. things that like, even if I was of age, I would be like, <laughs> Fuck that's, you not, yeah, like, that's not what we're talking about. For you know sure. what I mean? That's not what we're here for. Um, long story short, the night ended and we went out like our separate ways. And about two weeks later, I got a DM from this girl. I guess she did a shoot with him and her husband's like in the military or something. Mm -hmm. And so he went into the bathroom, like when she was out shooting with him and like the outlet that he had, like that's like a plug in. So like, you plug in like all different things. It was like blinking red and he took out, yeah. took it out and it was like an SD card. So it was like a camera in our bathrooms. But good for him that he caught him though. Yeah. No. I mean, I mean it's if, not a good situation, but good that he got it. You know, because I think he got justice to the guy, right? Yeah, he's actually out. He's out? Mm -hmm. How how long did he... Uh, how I have time? no idea. I have no idea. I just know um, somebody, some girl actually, she DM'd me and she was like, hey, is this guy like good to work with? I saw that you worked with him. I wanted to know your thoughts. And I, I clicked on his page and I was like, I couldn't believe it. Wait a second. He's out doing back the same he's work? He's doing, yep. Come on. I'm not lying. He In has Arizona? Like a new, yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't move. He's Damn. out. Yeah. That's crazy. So I don't know because after everything that happened. Because like you probably I don't said, need a license to be a photographer, but that's probably why. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so after the whole situation, I never told my mom. Like my mom found out through that video that I posted on YouTube because I never told anybody about that. How did that affect you? Because like everybody kind of, it, it affects everybody differently and not necessarily that listen you it's, it's something that your body or you was exposed and you didn't know about it so obviously yeah. that has to be something that you take very seriously and it had to have bothered you and probably still does it does yeah because honestly like i felt so gross and like i just felt like just dirty i don't know it was just really weird feeling because there was nothing that i could have done like i felt like i did everything right and um, the fact that like I didn't like I just slipped up and it, that's all it takes honestly and like it could have been way worse than what it was and that's what for I'm sure. grateful for is Definitely. like that's all it was and not I don't know who saw it because there was rumors that he was posting it on like different like um, websites and like selling our videos so I'm sure the FBI like you know got involved in yeah and that's another thing too is I was I felt okay and then that's when we had like an investigator and he was like which one of you guys is underage and then like that's when I raised my hand and he was like, because there's a video on there of an underage girl and we're trying to identify her. And that's fucking And crazy, like yeah. that, like that sentence right there, like when he was like, we're trying to identify her, like that's when my heart just like sank and everything like that I like worked for, it just felt like it was all for like nothing because I felt like everything was over after that, you know? And from what I read, they, they raided his house too and they found some other stuff too, like child pornography yeah. and stuff like that. So this guy's just a complete scumbag. I don't know how the hell he's out. I don't. And then like, that's another thing too, is his wife was like on Facebook going off like calling us liars that we just wanted his money like that we're just a bunch of Dude, sluts there's a camera and, like, there's a camera in the outlet bro what you and she said that he didn't he wouldn't know about cameras but we obviously girls we do a lot of stalking and like on his on his facebook page like that's what he went to college for was uh -huh. technology and cameras and he was convicted so yeah. he did the crime he went to church went to trial the whole thing he was convicted by a jury i'm assuming yeah or he copped out either way he was guilty so fuck that guy <laughs> yeah no it was it was horrible like it was just a horrible experience just because like when like you go through something like that and then you're being accused of being like like of lying it's like okay like you know what i mean like there's no reason for me to lie like i don't obviously i don't want this out there i don't want this information for myself so it's like i'm not gonna make up a story is this story why you're so passionate about sex trafficking or is, is i mean is that really why it is why but i've always just been um very 
it's hard because I've gone through a lot of things with guys. Like when I was younger, I was molested. Um, I almost was kidnapped when I was younger as well. And it's just like, I've always had an anger and like a hurt towards like men. And that's just like the reality of it. Like I have nothing against you. It's just like men in general, like just give me this weird, scary vibe. And so like when I see other girls like being taken advantage of Most or definitely. anything like that, and like they don't stand up for themselves. Like it frustrates me and it just irritates me that like, men think that they have that like power over women they think that they have you know control over what we do and it it makes me mad too that women like allow them to do something like that because it's like no like i don't it's just that's a whole nother thing like i i feel passionate about it for other reasons but it's just i have anger for my own reasons you know like that do you think maybe because you know growing up without your dad do you think that has to do with it um, cause I don't, I don't talk to my dad at all. And like, not that it's obviously different, you know, you're a woman, I'm a man, but like, I understand somewhat of like what it is for my dad. It's more so he like kept walking out on us and like, would just keep leaving us and make promise me so many things. And I would never, it would never be fulfilled. And so for sure. that's why like, I am the way I am. Like when people promise me things, I don't, I don't ever like hold it to Until them. It happens. Exactly. Like I think everyone's temporary, like, you know, and I just, again, with the whole proving people wrong, like. I I like to brag to him, if that makes sense. Like, and it's really bad, but it's like whenever like my I'm not close to my dad's side of the family, so whenever they ask me, I'm always like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I'm great. Like, I'm doing all this. Like, (laughs) exactly. Like, I just it's hard because I don't want to like hurt him, but it's like I want you to know I'm doing good without you. For sure, I totally get that. And that's what's hard because he's actually getting out in like two months and like three months, and everyone's asking me like what I want to do, you know, whether to like continue to try to have a relationship with him or just i think that's something you have to figure out what's best for you and what's going to make you happier or happy and that's what's hard is i keep pushing it back in the back of my head but it's like the date keeps coming closer and closer and i'm just i have no answer right now you know well it's tough you'll you'll figure it out i'm sure you have you're, you talk to your, you have a good relationship with your mom and yeah brothers, my mom and my dad <laughs> okay, so there you go yeah awesome um let's get into what your fans mean to you and like the people that subscribe to your YouTube and your Instagram and comment on your stuff and send you DMs. I hate the word fans. I hate that. But you have them. You got fans. So let's just call it what it is. Um, what's that like? Um, what word would you use besides fans then? Supporters. Okay. Supporters. Supporters. There yeah. Because I mean, I've never had so many people support me for what I do because um, my family doesn't support what I do. And that they was- They don't support what you they do. They don't. Even your mom said- uh no we do not talk to them because of that reason wow yeah just recently like we got into this whole thing because of um i was protesting with the blm for sure and out here in phoenix yeah do you know Kyrie? i do because he was out there like on the front lines too and i interviewed him a couple times he's my my dog but yeah, yeah. he was out there too so it was just like they don't support a lot of things that i do or like what i believe in or sure. you know, like just modeling like they don't believe in any of that like they don't think i can be anything from that so um, to have so many people support me, that's not my family. Like to me, like that's like family. You know what I mean? I think of my friends as family because of how much they support me, how much they do for me. They do more things for me than my own family, you know? So that that obviously means so much to me. And I never really realized, like you never realize what your words and what you can do for other people just from a screen until like you hear the words like from messages and just people reaching out to you. It's like, damn, like I didn't realize that I could really like help someone like this, you know? And especially with like that YouTube video that I did on like the sex trafficking thing. Like I went to like this photo shoot literally like a week after and this girl that I didn't even know came up to me and she was like, thank you like for your video. And I kept getting like messages from other people's stories. And um, it was just like a bittersweet moment, you know, but just to hear like that they're comfortable enough with like telling me like their stories, their size of things, like, it made me like more so proud that I did what I did because I was honestly very hesitant on posting that video just because nobody knew that about me, you know? For sure. But I think it was good that, you know, people can get to hear a different side of you and something that you've been through and kind of relate. Maybe they can relate to, which obviously they did. Yeah. And I think that too, like that's what really made me want to be more open with people. But then again, I want them to realize that like I have a private life too, you know? For sure. Let's talk about your private life a little bit. It seems like you're in a really good relationship from, you know, your posts that you've been putting up recently. Is this a new relationship then? Because I know you, you, you obviously got out of a relationship a couple months ago. It's the same one. It's the same relationship. Okay. Yeah. It we were, yeah. It was just because of, I do so much. So that's another thing too. Like it's hard. It was really, I, he was my first relationship. He's your first relationship. He's my first relationship. Wow. Okay. 
But so have you guys been like on and off for a while, or has this been like? Uh, we only like one off. Yeah, okay. one off. Um, at the worst time. At the worst time. <laughs> yeah, but it was because like I'm, and that's another thing. Like it's really hard for me too because I do so much that I don't really have time. And let's call it what it is. With what you do, there has to be a lot of trust as well. Exactly. And that's another, that's another thing I was going to go into, like the whole jealousy thing. Like I can't be with someone who's like insecure. Like Definitely. And even him, like I've not like kissed guys, but I've been like all up on them, like for, for sure. videos and things like that. And he's on set with me. Like he knows like this is what I do. You know what I mean? As long as I'm coming back like with you and like you know what it is, like it's just work. This is business. Exactly. And like that's what was hard with us at that time was because I was out of state like doing these videos with these guys and Listen, it just happened to be like that. If my girlfriend was going to do a music video at the weekend, I would have to sit back and I would- it, <laughs> You I have to be, admire, yeah. I'd be a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. But um, it seems like you guys are in a good place right now. Yeah, we are. I think we both understand um, the circumstances of like what we both do and i think honestly the second time around is a lot better just because we both promise to you know what like communicate better and i think that time away from each other made us miss you know like that about each other because we we all want the same thing like we all want to make it you know what i mean and i think as long as you realize and know like that trust is there like that communication is there like there should be no other reason why we can't work like make it work you know so he's a big supporter of you and everything you're doing now he can take all my pictures are from him on my Instagram. Okay, so, so he's yeah. gonna start his own photography business, maybe. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Before we end this interview, where can obviously people find you first of all? Because you got the YouTube, you have the Instagram. Is it Nadia Monique on uh, on YouTube as well? Yeah, it's just Nadia Monique on everything. Um, on Instagram, I think it's with two eyes. It's Nadia Monique, okay. and then that's pretty much what I go by. Actually, Monique is my middle name. Um, Vargas is your last name? Yeah. Okay. I did a little bit of research. Whatever. I know. I feel like you know more about me than I do. I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, by the way, do you know how many views are on the on that music video right now? I don't. We can check. It's 85 I think it's million. 85 million? Yeah. So it's doing numbers. That's crazy. Yeah. See, I haven't even checked. Like, I know, like, it was going up throughout the weeks, but. 85 million people saw your face right in the beginning of the video. So, yeah. That's so crazy. Super crazy. I don't believe that. So. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> I just, I looked at it right before I came here. I was like, damn, that's a lot. That's crazy. Yeah. What are your plans for 2021? We're four days in. What do you want to accomplish this year? Um, I promised myself that I was going to work on myself. And I know that sounds so like no, cliche fun. and stuff, but I've already gotten like a lot of things done for myself, like to myself. And like, that's another big thing is like, like Christmas, like I don't mind spending so much money on other people. But when it comes to, like $5 to me, I'm like, Ooh, like that's a lot of money. Like I'm kind of breaking, like, you know what I mean? Am I going to make it the rest of the week? Like, but I just told myself this year, like I'm going to like splurge on myself. I'm going to like treat myself. If I want something, like I worked hard for it. So that's I'm going to do definitely. that. So hell yeah. That's my thing this year. And then also just, um, again, putting myself out there. I want to do more this year. Like, obviously, I've seen what I can do. And, like, I kind of got, like, a jump start from this video. So Definitely. I want to do something with that and make the most out of it. For sure. Well, I'm I'm really linked up with Rick Ross, the boss. <laughs> yeah. I know you told me uh, you were casting in some of his videos. Boss, make this yeah. happen. I would love to see you in a, one, of, one of his new videos. He's actually dropping an album coming up, Richer Than I Ever Been. That's so awesome. Maybe we'll get you in a video. We'll see. Uh, he's gonna see this so i'm sure he's gonna want that too but uh we'll, we'll see everybody follow uh nadia on all of her channels instagram youtube uh known as the latina barbie yes sir <laughs> these are the coldest interviews the maddie ice show yep. we're out everybody fucking with me now they was saying last week ice ice baby look like i pull off a heist or summer got my nick on ice they like that boy john looking nice some niggas addicted to drugs my niggas addicted to lights i know about cut color clarity i don't know a thing about price my plane giant she a good girl but my bus down she a dancer you cat bad nigga don't want no smoke they say that shit cause cancer see y'all niggas be sleeping on me I'm talking